National Geographic. Now in free preview. This is Rogers TV Ottawa. Welcome to Ward Updates 2022. This is a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with Ottawa City Councillors and of course, as I said, our Mayor. We're gonna discuss a, a number of issues um, that are important to you. And during these discussions, issues that of course affect you, your family, your neighbors and other members of your community. My guest today is Keith Egli. City Councilor for Knoxdale, Marivell. Welcome to the show, Keith. Uh, you know, really appreciate you spending time with us today. And just wanted to start off and asking you on a personal note, um, how have you been? How have you been dealing with with the pandemic? We're almost two years in. Uh, what's it been like for you and your family? Well, I mean, it's uh, I think uh, probably similar to what it's been like for for most people in the city, and and we've had to learn to. Um, give up things and and to interact with one another differently. Uh, my experience is is somewhat different, I guess, in the sense that in addition to being the counselor, I'm, I'm also have the role as the chair of uh, public health. So I've I've been pretty immersed in uh, in COVID and, and unfortunately, sometimes so is my family in terms of the meetings that I've held virtually from my home or whatever. There's been a lot of COVID talk uh, over the last couple of years in our in our house. Um, and I, I mean, I guess how we deal with it is we, we get out as much as we can, you know, thankfully we have a dog and, and Archie makes sure that you've got to get out every day a couple of times and get some fresh air and sunshine if you can, um, yeah. you know, and, and just try and stay in touch with people. I mean, even if, even if it's like this, you know, even if it's virtually a Zooming or, or, or Skyping or what have you, uh, just stay in touch with one another is what we've been trying to do. Uh, two of my kids live outside of the home, so uh, okay. we've been uh, doing our best to to stay in, in contact with them. And but you know, Christmas has been different, birthdays have been different. It's been that way, I think, for everybody in the city. And and uh, we're all just trying to uh, to get to, as you said, some sense of normalcy. And uh, I've just, if I can, I've just been so impressed, um, both as a counselor and as the chair of public health, about how caring. And, and collaborative everybody in the city has been, uh, whether it's been about uh, following protocol, wearing masks or, or physically distancing, or whether it's uh, getting, getting your, your vaccine or your booster or helping your neighbor or your friend to do that. Everybody has really pulled together here. And uh, you know, another good example, uh, Derek, is, is how people have supported their local restaurants and, and businesses, whether it's through takeout or ordering online to keep those businesses that are so often there for us, whether it's supporting that baseball team or hockey team or, or giving to a charity auction, um, you know, it's our opportunity and our chance to, to support them back and, and help them get through this. So seen a lot of kindness over the last two years. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned that. It, it, it's it's nice to hear you sharing some of the positives because, as you said, the majority of of citizens, uh, the majority of the public have have been wonderful. And unfortunately, we we hear too often the negative stories, and we don't get to hear the collaborative stories and the support that people have been giving to you know their their local businesses, whether it's restaurant and and retail and so on. So I'm glad I'm glad we started off with some positive messages. And let let's continue talking about you know your role uh, you mentioned you know the chair of the Ottawa Board of Health um, in in that role you as you mentioned Keith you've been immersed in in everything um, do you think that, you know as a city uh, how would you grade us um, or, or even council how would you grade council in how they've dealt with with the pandemic and a, a lot of those a lot of the decisions certainly out of your hands so those decisions are provincial decisions but as a whole how do you feel council has reacted so i think i think very well i mean council has been um very supportive of the work that public health has been doing very supportive of the board um you know there's been many times when we've we've brief council, for example, as part of the, uh, the council meeting. Um, 
And so I, I think, you know, as I was saying about citizens across the city point together, I really think the elected officials have as well and understand the importance and of what we, we need to do to get through this. Show good example by, you know, supporting the local businesses, getting that vaccination, sharing information with their residents about where, uh, where the clinics are and, and, you know, what can be done to help people who might have some issues around getting getting to the vaccination clinic or making the time or having child care or whatever the whatever the the the, the barrier is um counselors have been great in working with public health and getting that message out there um and uh yeah so i mean if i had to grade the city i would absolutely give us an a um as i say people have understood the importance and the and the um significance of what we're going through now and and how important it is to work together and uh, you know public health says you know we're all in the same storm but we're not necessarily in the same boat and yeah. and that's to say the pandemic is everywhere but it it impacts everybody in a slightly different way but i think we've been good in the city in recognizing that trying to adjust for that and trying to be there to support one another whether it's politically or just just you know neighbor to neighbor friend to friend Let's talk about your specific ward. Um, it's it's a, by the way, I, I grew up in Arlington Woods, um, which is you know just a beautiful part. I, you know you have so many wonderful communities there: Craig Henry and you know Parkwood Hills, a Trent Village, uh, Fisher Heights. I could go on and on. Uh, wonder, wonderful areas of of the of the city. Uh, specific to your ward, as we get closer to the election in, in October, what are some of your goals specific to this term that you would like to see completed or at least moving along in in, in Knoxdale, Maryville? Well, I, th I think, you know, one of the important things is that, you know, whoever's sitting around the council table um, uh, for the beginning of the next term, through the next term, I think has to be able to see a larger vision of the city Yes, your ward councillor, but the city has been through a significant situation. We're still going through it, and we have to find a way to to uh, come out of that, come out of that, and and return to uh, some sense of normal. But at the same time, understanding that some of the things that we've been used to are going to be different. For example, I don't think everybody is necessarily going to go downtown to work from nine to five, Monday to Friday anymore. I think mm -hmm. some people don't like working from home, but some people do. They find it more convenient. They they cut out the the daily commute, gives them that much more time at home, uh, be available for their for their children. Um, so I, I think. bring ourselves back in terms of, of uh, you know more local issues um, there there are there are a number of things uh, one of the projects that uh, is near and dear to my heart is is uh, uh, what's called the baseline rapid transit corridor which um, runs through baseline between uh, you know sharing ward 9 and ward 8, ward eight and we're ready to go. We're, we're working on getting extra levels uh, or extra uh, support from the other levels of government, funding support. But it's it's a project that's going to enhance transit in the city, but it's also going to add in 11 kilometers of uh, pedestrian facilities and 11 kilometers of cycling facility. So I, I think it's a wonderful pro uh, project that, that speaks to all modes of transportation. And, uh, you know, so that's something I would like to see move forward in a positive way over the next term and get shovels in the ground and get that uh, get that built. Uh, some of the other things that, uh, you know, challenges that we've been dealing with, of course, is uh, unfortunately in my ward, we just had that terrible fire and explosion. And oh, there, yeah. there's yeah. Um, significant ripple effects there. Um, not the least of which obviously is, is for the families uh, of the people who, who work worked uh, at the site and uh, unfortunately perished uh, in the in the event uh, but there there are concerns around surrounding neighborhoods like Pine Glen around uh, water quality uh, as a result of you know what what toxic materials may have uh, you know may leach into the soils so far we've been told that the risk to the water uh, supply is low and my office and the city is working with the Ministry of the Environment who really have the um, 
the lead on this in terms of dealing with situations like this and, and maintaining the water quality in that regard. But that's a concern right. for, for that right. portion of my ward and and they they want answers. And I think everybody wants answers about what happened that that day. How did that terrible thing happen? And how can we avoid it happening in the future? So um, it's being investigated by a number of different government departments, uh, the fire marshal, the coroner's office, um, for example. And we've got to get to the bottom of it. We have to figure out how that happened and uh, put put measures in so something like that doesn't happen ever again. Uh, so, so that's another piece that we'll be getting more information on as the year progresses and probably into next year and next term. And we'll need to, uh, you know, pay good attention to what we learn and make sure that we we take those those lessons and put them into practice. Um, some of, some of the other things I want to see we we have a number of um, park projects. Uh, on the go. Uh, one of the neighborhoods I think you mentioned in the intro is uh, is Manordale and uh, we're yeah. doing a, a major renovation of Round Hay Park in, in Manordale that will uh, shovels be in the ground this year and hopefully we'll be able to finish up this year but again with COVID and supply chain issues it could could go into the next year but we're pretty excited uh, about that project and uh, one of the things that we're really focusing on in that park um, and something that the community asked for uh, is to make it as accessible as possible. So we're trying some some different things in that park to make it more accessible for folks, and uh, we're excited to see how that's going to work out. In, in what uh, sorry, so in what manner, Keith? Right. Uh, what what uh, what what are constituents saying to you that they that they would like to see added to that particular park? So, it, so it's it's um, it started off as a renewal of the park, as as we do, as as play structures, you know, become older and worn out, and and uh, yeah. they need to be replaced. That's how it started, and then it led into led to a discussion around making those play structures more accessible for people. So, one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting in normally in parks, the older parks you see sand, and in the newer parks you see wood chips. Uh, both, you know, both have their sand more than wood chips, but they both have their challenges if people, you know, have to use a walk or a wheelchair. And and so we're putting in a, a rubberized um, uh, surface uh, by right. the play structures uh, to to make, uh, make it easier for, for people who do have those mobility challenges to get around the park and, and, and use the, you know, watch their kids play or, or, you know, closer to them. So we're pretty excited about that. It's not something we've done a lot in the city. So we, we're, we're trying it out. And again, it was a big community push. The community said, we really want to see this at Round Hay Park. And so I work with the park planners uh, to make it happen. As they say, shovels in the ground this year. And, and hopefully we, we finish up over the summer into the fall. Uh, what are some of the major development projects that that are going on out, outside of you know parks and recreation? You know we've seen development happen in every ward across the city. What are the, some of the major developments that are happening in in your ward? Well, one I'm really excited about is, and you'll be familiar with this site, Derek, uh, being in the in the media business, is the old CJOH site, which, um, mm. as yeah. you know, there was that that significant fire years and years ago and and the the site has sat dormant and vacant for for a long time and uh we now have uh, a project that's been brought forward to our planning department which is going to uh change that site significantly looking at putting upwards of 2,000 units in there a brand new city park um and uh, good connectivity to the rest of, of the area. And, and, you know, again, that's not very far from the baseline uh, transit project that I spoke about. So that will be, that's probably the biggest uh, single development in the uh, almost 12 years that have represented this area going in at the, at the 2000 or so number of units. Um, keep, keep, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, uh, small just businesses. wondering. Yeah. I was just going to ask: Does that does that development fit into the sort of this Ottawa master plan of this of this fifteen minute community? Um, is is that is that part of that development? Very much so. Very much so. Okay. So as I say, you you there'll be a place to live. There'll be um, they're looking at incorporating smaller businesses also on the site. So your coffee shops, your drug stores, convenience shops. Uh, it's uh, very close to to Maryville Road. Uh, where you have the Loblaws and, you know, so you can get your grocery shopping done and, and banks and, and everything else. And then again, if, 
if the um, phase one rapid transit corridor piece goes ahead, you're going to have very easy access to uh, cycling, the walking facilities, and and good efficient uh, transit. So it very much meets the requirements of what we talked about when we're saying we want to create a 15 minute neighborhood. So um, I, I can tell you in the time that I've been representing this area, there have been a number of potential projects that have come forward that for one reason or another have not come to fruition. This one looks very solid. Uh, we've had a public meeting about it. The, the, uh, the community was, was quite, uh, quite excited about the project. And there's always the usual concerns about how long it'll take to build and you know, how noisy will it be while the building's going on and of course. potential uh, around traffic issues or what have you. But generally speaking, uh, the, the public was very happy with the design of the buildings, the design of the site, very, very excited about the fact that a new park will be going in and looking forward to uh, bringing community input to, uh, to the design of that park. So um, yeah, that's, as I say, the single biggest development piece that's coming forward in, in my area um, in, in the next little while. Uh, Keith, one thing that that always comes up when you look at a, you know, the, this this spot that you're talking about is, you know, how how and why does it take so long to finally get, you know, something done? Uh, I, I guess most people we, we just don't understand the inner workings of, of 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 how a development certainly comes to be. Can you just walk us through that process of of why a, a space like that? would sit for so long before something is, is finally able to be done with it? Well, there's a couple, there were a couple of challenges to that site, not the least of which was, was the fire. And again, when you have a fire, um, there's an issue around uh, the, uh, the site, the ground. Uh, is it contaminated? And if you're gonna turn around and, and build on it for whatever purpose, you need to look at that and figure out how to remediate uh, the the property in terms of removing any possible uh, you know, toxic substances. So that that's always a consideration on a site like that. And the other was it's 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 kind of a unique uniquely shaped site, and there's a lot of edge pieces, and right. people on the edges, um, property owners along the edges, you know, each one had to be met with by the by the person who owns the bulk of the property and um, you know work out arrangements about whether they're going to stay there whether their existing business will be incorporated into what's happening whether they're going to be bought out so there's a lot of discussion and negotiation with individual property owners at that particular site um, and again you always have the challenge when you're you're building within an existing neighborhood or, or community. You know, it's different from expanding, you know, for example, Barhaven, you know, where you're, you're dealing with just, you know, vacant green land and not a whole lot around. It, you know, there, there are logistical challenges when you're trying to build within an existing community and the impacts, as I say, during the build of noise and dust, and traffic, all those things. So, so it does take some time, but I, I feel good about it this time. I think this project will go forward um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the city likes it, the community seems to like it, and the developers commit it, so. Um, in your in your ward, we've we've seen you. You know, you've implemented a, a number of traffic calming measures in in different areas throughout the ward, and in, in in some of those different communities. Um, always seem to be complaints about speeding through neighborhoods and this kind of thing. Um, how much success have you had in in Knoxdale, Maravell, with with implementing some of those things? So you know we've we've uh, we've done a lot of things. We have uh, you know we have. Um, the uh, the systems to tell you how fast you're going as you go by so you need to slow down we have that in numerous locations uh, we um, have uh, put in different kinds of signage uh, pavement markings uh, all those things we just finished a major traffic study on uh, craig henry drive and uh, a lot of community consultation around that and looking at how we can uh, make that make that road uh, safer for people to drive and ways to uh, reduce um, reduce speed of people because it's, it's a well-traveled route it's a it's a very populous uh, community it's adjacent mm -hmm. to a park uh, so we yeah, just and it, finished and a the lot study. of people a lot of, sorry I was just going to say a lot of people use that sort of as a commute route too right because you're going to you're really going from one end to another in some pretty major arteries and I'm sure that's been a frustration for you know 
Yeah, you, in, you, you in see Nathan people jumping off a green bank and trying to get through yeah. to Knoxdale and, and Woodruff. And and so there, there's a number of things that we're going to be trying there, um, different things to um, visually narrow the roadway, for example, because the more narrow the roadway appears, the more cautiously you will drive and hopefully the slower that you will that you will drive. So, so that's a project that, that's underway, and uh, we'll be going uh, we'll be going forward in the next year. And again, very good uh, community consultation on that. One of the really interesting things about COVID, there's a lot of bad things about COVID, for, certainly, but the use of uh, remote meetings, yeah, in a lot of circumstances, has actually led to an enhanced uh, level of community engagement because people don't yeah. have to worry about leaving their homes anymore or, or finding, you know, somebody to watch the kids while they go to the community meeting or, you know, does it, is it going to conflict with the dinner or, or, or some activity that the kids have to be at. Um, so using Zoom uh, and, and other, you know, platforms like that have actually, we've seen at committees, we've, you know, more people showing up and we've seen at community meetings uh, also an increase in the number of people that are participating. And, you know, they can go on the chat function. They can leave questions to be followed up on later. Um, they can take the mic themselves and, and, you know, speak directly to the individuals. And, again, you can do it all from the comfort of your home. So, yeah, um, that's a good point. COVID it, it, it has was, made it, I was just going to say it's, our, it's been our, you know, the, the process was archaic for so long, right, for residents to be able to voice an opinion and, and to share, you know, questions, as you said. So I, I think you're right. I, I think uh, it has, it, you know, if, if we're looking at some of the positives that may have come out of that, that's certainly one of them. I couldn't agree more. I, I just want to get back to public transportation and, and specific to your ward. You know, what are you hearing from residents? Uh, can all your residents affordably get to where they want to go? Are, are, are they are, are they regaining confidence uh, that it's reliable and convenient as well as, well as affordable? What have you been hearing? No, I, I think so. I mean, again, going back to one of the comments made earlier, a, a lot of my residents, not all of them, certainly, but a lot of them have been able to uh, work from home. So right. a lot of the a lot of the commuters haven't been commuting for the last almost two years uh, in, in, in terms of that. So um, but what feedback we do get has been has been reasonable, has been positive. You know, everybody obviously was was concerned when when the LRT was down for as long as it was down. Um, I, I think, you know, the positive side of that is it, it allowed OC and the outside engineering firms that were engaged by the city to take a really deep dive and and figure out why things were not clicking, why things were not working and um, sit down and, and make those fixes. You know, we, we still have some bumps in the road. We've, we've seen some of the, you know, for example, mm -hmm. during the really last uh, awful cold snap, um, one of the trains went down re related to uh, to the cold. And, um, but this, you know, it's been extraordinarily cold. And, you know, that used to happen with the buses too sometimes, right? You would, you know, snow, oh, yeah. you saw it with the snowstorm. So yeah. no system is ever going to be perfect, Derek. But I think that I think we've had an opportunity, as I say, to do that deep dive. We've heard loudly and strongly from the community. We want the product we paid for. We want it to work. We want it to be on time. We want it to be reliable. And and so I think we're making some very steady progress to making that happen. Uh, the the pandemic, of course, has um, you know been a huge hit on on city revenues, right? Uh, revenue shortfalls, it, you know, obviously unprecedented. No one could have uh, foreseen a, a pandemic, and and not just not with not just with public transportation, right? It, it's huge hits on you know city programs, uh, city of Ottawa programs, and event spaces, and all these sort of things. Uh, you know, three percent tax hike. Some people are wondering if if we're sort of putting off the inevitable that in a few years we might have to raise the the tax rate to something. You know, quite unreasonable as far as most people are concerned. Do do you think that um, you know that 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 you'll be able to find other ways to to combat those shortfalls rather than having to raise taxes? I don't know between that five and ten percent range that some people are concerned about. Well, I you know I, I think 
that one of the things we've been extremely lucky with is that the other levels of government have recognized the significance of what's going on and 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 have um, been very supportive. You know, I think, for example, of of you know, public health budgets have are larger than by far than they've ever been uh, to accommodate all the work on. Uh, vaccinating people and, and contact tracing and providing public information about about how to deal with COVID if it if it happens to impact your family and or workplace, and the other levels of government have been extremely good about recognizing that concern, recognizing that more money needs to be spent now, and uh, bolstering uh, the city and well cities right across the country really in terms of being able to accommodate those needs, and. You know, I, I think the city, as I said earlier, it's it's collaborative, it's cooperative, it's strong. I think people are ready to bounce back. People are ready to start doing all the things that they, they have missed doing. So I think you're going to see the numbers, you know, for example, if you want to talk about transit, I think those numbers are going to go back up again. It'll take a bit of time, but I think they're going to go back up again and the, and the fair revenue will be there. People will be wanting to rent facilities again, whether it's skating rinks or basketball courts or whatever, as we, those restrictions are, re are relaxed and people are out to be out and about again. So, it, you know, as I said earlier, the next term of council, at least the first part of it is going to be about rebuilding, bringing people back together, bringing people out and about in the city. But um, I, I think we'll be able to do that working closely together and with our other levels of government. And that rebuilding, Keith, is will will certainly be with council itself, right? We've we've often seen a, a very divided council. Uh, we're certainly going to see some new faces around the table. Of course, a new mayor. What, what kind of leadership qualities are going to be necessary to bridge some of that divide? Well, I think you know you're not wrong. It's been a bit of a bumpy council, and I, and I and you know as much as I I said. You know, Zoom can be a good thing for community engagement. I'm not sure it was has been a good thing for council. Um, it's it's a lot easier to work together when you're all in the same room um, right. and having those debates and those discussions. It's a lot easier to be chippy, if you will, when you're not in the same room with somebody and you're just looking at a little square on a screen. So, so I I think you know that part hasn't helped the sort of collaborative nature of, of council. And um, I think we need people around the table next term that have a vision of the whole city that can see, you know, keep their own wards and communities. Obviously it has to be a priority for you as a ward councillor, but I think right. we need to see right. the whole piece and whoever turns out to be mayor, um, and we've got three, I guess, three candidates now, and I suspect there'll be more before it's all said and done. That mm -hmm. person has to be able to see Ottawa with all of its blemishes and all of its its challenges. You know, Ottawa's not an easy city to govern as a mayor. You, we've we've got we're, we're more than a million people. We have an urban center. We have suburban centers. We have rural centers. It's 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 a lot going on. And and yeah. somebody living out in a rural area doesn't have the same concerns as someone in the downtown core and and the, or even in the burbs. So we need someone with, who can see the whole city. It can see I that, couldn't agree um, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Councillor Egli, uh, really appreciate you spending time with us, and uh, thank you so much for for sharing your thoughts and your opinions, not only on your own ward but uh, but citywide. Thanks, uh, we really appreciate it. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit Rogers.com for more details. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Venus and Serena gonna shake up this world. I think you might just have the next Michael Jordan. Oh no, brother man. I got me the next two. <laughs> hey, how can I help you? It's me, Sophie. There's people in the house. Just stay calm. We need to get you to the basement and wait for the cops. Is there anything in my way? Wait, Sophie, wait!
This is Rogers TV, Ottawa. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Welcome to tonight's edition of the Kiwanis TV Bingo here on Rogers TV Cable 22. My name is Phil Astley, your host. As always, we'd have sponsors help set with production every Monday. We have Rogers TV Cable 22, also on channels 182 and 510, all on Rogers, as well as streaming live online to play from anywhere that you can have internet access at rogerstv.com slash Kiwanis Bingo. 63 participating Circle K, SO, and Ultramar stores from Orleans all the way up to Carlton Place and Almont. That's our bingo cards for us. And last but not least, Diamond Storage takes care of all of our storage needs. Let's get the rules out of the way for tonight's bingo game. You must be 18 years or older to play TV bingo and to claim a prize. You must call 613-728-1001 and give us the verification number in the center of the free space to verify your cards. Winning bingo cards must be validated within 10 minutes after the final game. We suggest not using a diver for the crazy T and two corner stamp games. Divers are good and safe for the two lines of the BNO and the full card games. The full card game is continued after the BNO lines. In case of multiple winners, the prize payouts will be shared equally. For more information, you can visit our website at ottawakiwanistvbingo.org. You can also give us a like on Facebook. It's Kiwanis TV Bingo on Facebook. Here at the Rogers studio on the Kiwanis side, volunteering their time and taking care of everything for the Kiwanis. We have Marin and Dave on the Rogers side, taking care of the production, the graphics and the audio. We have Scott as well as Mike. All right, let's get a quick shot of our 75 bingo balls. All balls there, ready to go. We'll get them dropped for the first time tonight. All balls dropped, ready to go for game number one. Game number one, the crazy T, as you can see up on the graphic board. For tonight's game, that is a super bingo. It is a $1,000 prize. If we have one single winner, the one winner will receive the entire thousand. And if we have multiple winners, they will share it nice and evenly. Don't forget, we do suggest no dabbers for the crazy T. First number for the crazy T. I-19, Eadzi's Neff, I-19, Eadzi's Neff, 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 B2, B2, B2. Oh, 73, oh, 73, oh, 73. G49, G49, G49. I-17, easy set, 
I-17. G-56, G-56, G-56. I-27, E-27, I-27. N31, N31, N31. N36, N36, N36. Seventy-five, oh soixante quinze, oh seventy-five. Oh sixty-two, oh soixante deux, oh sixty-two. And thirty-eight, and thirty-eight. And forty-one, and quarante-un, and forty-one. I-21, E-21, I-21. N-32. And thirty two and thirty two. I twenty six, even this. I twenty six. We do have potential winning cards on I-26. If you have the crazy T showing up on the graphic board, give us a call, 613-728-1001. The verification number right in the middle of the free space on your cards, 613-728-1001. Dave and Marin, ready and waiting by the phones to verify your cards for you. 
So don't forget that that is the number to call in for your bingo verification, and it's also the phone number to call for shoutouts. Our volunteers do show up 15 minutes before the show, so they will come in and answer phones between 6.45 and 7 o'clock and get your shoutouts down on paper. Once 7 o'clock rolls around, the lines are saved for bingo verification only, so please call before 7 for your shoutouts. I-25, E-25, I-25, B-13, 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 Potential winners for the crazy tea. 613 728 So you'll need verification number right in the middle of the free space on your cards. Call in if you have the crazy tea or if you think you do, and give that verification number in the middle of the free space to the volunteers. They will verify it against the computer system here at the Rogers studio. Direct line 613-728-1001. I-28, E-28, I-28, I-28, I-18, E-18, I-18, Big Canes, B-15. N-44, N-44. N-44. Direct line to the Rogers Studio, 613-728-1001. Dave and Marin are sitting by the phones to verify your cards. All right, so we have a phone call, some shout-outs here while we verify the crazy tea. To Debbie, happy birthday to you, and Marika Dabber from Jessica, Kevin, Caitlin, and Clarissa. To Leanna Norma, good luck from Holly. Also to all of the residents at the Robertson House, good luck tonight. First time playing in a long time from the staff at the Robertson House. All right, that's it for now. We do have a confirmed winner for the crazy tea. We're going to break. We're back in just over one minute with our next game, so please clear off your cards. Funds raised from Kiwanis TV Bingo provide opportunities for tomorrow's leaders. Kiwanis helps youth to explore their passion and expand their minds. Visit OttawaKiwanis.org to learn more. Members of the Kiwanis Club of Ottawa live to see our city thrive. We're your neighbours and friends, volunteering our time and painting the community with smiles. Come join us and see how one person can make a difference. Welcome back to the Kiwanis TV Bingo. As mentioned before the break, we do have a confirmed winner for the Crazy T. I don't have a winner's name yet, but as soon as I do, I will let you know. In the meantime, we'll get the balls dropped for the second time tonight.
all balls dropped, ready to go for game number two. Game number two, two corner stamps, as you can see on the graphic board. Another $1,000 prize for this game, as it is a super bingo. If we have one winner, the one winner receives the entire 1000 And if we have multiple winners, they will share it nice and evenly. Don't forget, for this game, we do not need, or we do suggest no dabbers. Also, for this game, we do not need the ends, so we will not punch them in. We will simply show them quickly to get them out of the way, and don't mark them, as they are not needed. First number out for the two corner stamps is 068. 068. 068. 068. G52, 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 G46, G46, G46. Here's an N. Thank you. G fifty four. G cinquante quatre. G fifty four. I-30, E-30, I-30. I-25, E-25, I-25. Seventy-one. Oh, soixante-et-onze. Oh, seventy-one. I twenty-two. I vingt-deux. I twenty-two. Oh, 75. Oh, 75. G57. 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 And then thank you. G forty seven G quarante sept G forty seven. I twenty Even I twenty I 
I-23, I-23. Here's an end. G56, 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 I27, E27, I27. B13, B13, we do have potential winning cards on B13, if you have the two corner stamps, give our volunteers a call, 613-728-1001, verification number right in the middle of the free space on your cards, 613-728-1001, our wonderful Kiwanis volunteers are ready and waiting by the phones to verify your cards for you. Next Monday, first Monday in February, and it will be February the 7th, and that will be a regular bingo. So next month is a normal month. First three Mondays will be regular bingos. The last Monday of the month will be a super bingo. Oh, 70. Oh, 70. Oh, 70. Don't forget at the end of the night, once we have a full card winner, you will have 10 minutes called in to verify your cards for tonight's games. So again, that's at the end of the night, once we have a confirmed winner for the full card. All we ask is that you call as quickly as possible because once 10 minutes are gone, so are the volunteers. And once the volunteers leave, we can no longer verify any other cards. So if you think you had a bingo, you're not too certain, it's your first time playing, your 10th time playing, um, and you want to double check your cards, you can do so it's by calling the number on the screen. G55. 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 The next ball up is an N, so we'll get that out of the way for you. Thank you. G58, 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 
still looking for potential winning cards for the two corner stamps. 613-728-1001. Dave and Marin are patiently waiting for a winner to call in. 613-728-1001. As always, when you call in, simply give the verification number in the middle of the free space on your cards. They will verify that against the computer system here at the Roger Studio, and they will know that way if your winning card or if your card is a winner or not. 613-728-1001. We do have a phone call, some shout-outs here while we verify the two corner stamps. To Andre and Bob, stop waiting and get the last number, would you? From Cassie and the kids. Also to Norma, Leanne, and Holly, good luck from your pal, Peter. And to Margot, Daryl, Seminal, break it over. Love from Tracy and Merle. The last one for now to Marcel, Tennis, and Norma and Helen, win big. Love from Tracy. That's all for now. We do have a confirmed winner for the two corner stamps. We're going to break. We're back in just over 60 seconds with our next game, so please clear off your cards. Raised from Kiwanis TV Bingo provide opportunities for tomorrow's leaders. Kiwanis helps youth to explore their passion and expand their minds. Visit OttawaKiwanis.org to learn more. Members of the Kiwanis Club of Ottawa live to see our city thrive. We're your neighbors and friends, volunteering our time and painting the community with smiles. Come join us and see how one person can make a difference. Welcome back to the Kiwanis TV Big O. My name is Phil Aslan, your host. We do have a confirmed winner for the two corner stamps. I don't have a name for this one either, but once I do, I will let you know. In the meantime, we will get the balls dropped for the final time tonight. All balls dropped, ready to go for game number three, as well as game number four. Game number three, any two lines of the BNO, as you can see up on the graphic boards, so all the Bs with the Ns, the Bs with the Os, or the Ns with the Os. This game is worth $1,000 also. If we have one winner, the one winner receives the entire thing. And if we have multiple winners, they do share it nice and evenly. For this game, we do not need the Is or Gs. We will call them and please mark them as they come out. You will need them for the full card portion and that follows afterwards. So from now on, dabbers are good and safe. Starting off, your first number for the two lines of the BNO. And 37. And 37. And 37. B11. B owns. B11. And 36, and 36, and 36. I-26, Eventsis, I-26. G49, G49, G49. I-18, 
18 et 18. I-18. N41. 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 N38, N38, N38. N40, N40, N40. N33, N33, N33. 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 N44, N44. N44. G51, G51, G51. G52, G52, G52. I-20, I-20. O sixty-six, O sixty-six. O sixty-two, O sixty-two. O sixty-two. O sixty one, O sixty one, O sixty nine, O sixty nine, O sixty nine. G58, G58, G58. G58, 
G46, G46, excuse me, G46. B7, B7, B7. I28, event rit, I28. G55, 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 B15, 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 I-19, I-19. G-48, G-48, G-48. I-24, 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 B-1, B-1, B-1. I-25, E-25, I-25. G-57, G-57, G-57. Oh, 73. Oh, 73. Oh, 73. G60. 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 B13, B13, B13. I-25, 
I-22. 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 N39 and Totnef N39 O70 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 we do have potential winning cards on 070. If you have the two lines of the BO, as you can see up on the graphic board, give us a call. 613 728 1001. The verification number right in the middle of the free space on your card. It's 613 728 1001. Marin and Dave, ready and waiting by the phones to verify your cards for you. Have a phone call, some shout outs here while we verify the two lines of the VNO. To Shane, Nicole, Ben, and Chantal. I hope you win big tonight from Ron and Elise. Also to the Garib family, first time playing bingo tonight. Good luck from your cousin Sonia. And to Don, Olivia, and Don. Good luck from JM Walkley Restaurant. That's all for now. We do have a confirmed winner for the two lines of the VNO. We're going to break. We're back in just over one minute with the full card portion. Please do not clear off your cards. Funds raised from Kiwanis TV Bingo provide opportunities for tomorrow's leaders. Kiwanis helps youth to explore their passion and expand their minds. Visit OttawaKiwanis.org to learn more. Members of the Kiwanis Club of Ottawa live to see our city thrive. We're your neighbors and friends, volunteering our time and painting the community with smiles. Come join us and see how one person can make a difference. Welcome back to the Kiwanis TV Bingo. We do have confirmed winner for the two lines of the BNO. I don't have a name, but we will let you know. And if we don't let you know tonight, please check our Facebook page. We do post the winner's first names along with stores they purchase the cards from for the lucky win on our Facebook page, normally within a day or two after the show. All right, so all the balls are still in play from the two lines of BNO. We are carrying on now for the full card. The $2,000 full card for tonight's Super Bingo. If we have one winner, one winner receives that entire 2000 And if we have multiple winners, they will share it nice and evenly. So your next number up for the full card portion. And 31. And 31. And 31. Sixty-five. Oh, sixty-five. 
68, oh 68, oh 68. I 17, easy set. I 17. Seventy-one. Oh, soixante-et-onze. Oh, seventy-one. And forty-five. And quarante-cinq. And forty-five. Seventy-five. Oh, soixante quinze. Oh, seventy-five. Oh, seventy-two. Oh, soixante douze. Oh, 72. I 27, event set. I 27. I sixteen. He says, I sixteen. Oh, sixty three. Oh, soixante trois. Oh, sixty three. G53, G53, G53. N32, N32. And thirty two. And thirty four. And top cat. And thirty four. Oh, 
Oh, 64. Oh, 64. Oh, 64. G54, 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 B8, B8, B8. We do have potential winning cards on B8. If you have the full card, give us a call, 613-728-1001. Our volunteers are writing, waiting by the phones, waiting to verify your cards for you. 613-728-1001. Simply give them the verification number in the middle of the free space on your cards, and they will verify that against the computer system here at the Rogers Studio. Don't forget, if or once we have a full card winner, you will have 10 minutes to call in to call to you will have 10 minutes to call in to verify your cards for tonight's games. So that'll be for 10 minutes after we have a full card winner. You can call in for those 10 minutes. Next Monday, regular bingo, February the 7th. Cards will be in the, next, in the 63 participating Circle K SO and Ultramar stores in the next couple of days. Some will have them as early as tomorrow morning. All of them will have them by Wednesday evening. That's for next Monday's regular bingo for February 7th. I-21. 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 I-30, 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 also a reminder that the Kiwanis Club of Ottawa does have a subscription service. You can get that set up by calling the Kiwanis office at 613-233-1900. They will gladly set up that subscription for you. Cards get mailed out directly to your home or to your community mailbox, wherever you get your mail. That is where the cards will go. Um, that way you don't have to go to a store. If you can't go to a store, if you don't want to go to a store, you can have them mailed right to you. All right, so do you have a phone call and the full card is being verified now. So again, next Monday, regular bingo, February 7th. Cards for next Monday's game will be in the 63 participating Circle K SO and Ultramar stores in the next couple of days. Some stores will have them as early as tomorrow morning. All of them will have them by Wednesday evening. That's for next Monday's regular bingo. All right, so we do have a confirmed winner for the full card. If we get a name before we go out, I will let you know. If not, give us a like on Facebook. Come on, it's TV Bingo on Facebook. The first names of all of the winners for tonight will be posted there in the next day or two, along with the stores they purchased the cards from for their lucky win. So we do have a confirmed winner. You now have just under 10 minutes calling to verify your cards for tonight's games. As always, if you fell asleep, you got home late, you forgot to play, you can call in for 10 minutes to verify your cards. Uh, just over nine minutes now. So once those nine minutes are gone, so are the volunteers. So please call as quickly as possible. So we do have a confirmed winner for the full card. That name will be posted on our Facebook page as quickly as possible in the next day or two. We do thank you so much for your continued support here with the Kiwanis Club of Ottawa's TV Bingo. It is greatly appreciated and we look forward to seeing you next Monday for the first regular bingo of February. Thanks for joining and have a great night.
call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us, or connect with us on social media. Every year, dozens of Canadians are killed or seriously injured because they take risks around railway tracks. Talk to your loved ones 